I'd like to welcome everyone to the Vasculitis Foundation's video presentation today. I'm Kathy Olewski, the host for the Vasculitis Foundation's educational webinar series, but I'm also a patient living with MPA vasculitis. Today's presentation is one in a series of tips for finding vasculitis information online, and we're going to cover the top five sites today that are best for researching vasculitis. Understanding how to effectively research online medical information is necessary to be an empowered patient. The Vasculitis Foundation has put together this series to help us all find accurate and relevant information. These webinars are part of the Vasculitis Foundation's commitment to patient education, and we would like to thank our sponsors, AstraZeneca, Amgen, and Novartis for supporting them. We're grateful today also to have another patient with us today, Jennifer Gordon, is here to help us to discover the best ways to research vasculitis online. And Jennifer Gordon is a biomedical researcher and is living with eGPA. So welcome, Jen, it's great to have you here with me today. Hi, Kathy, it's great to see you. And I, I think we're just gonna get started. Can you tell us about the top five sites that you recommend for patients actually looking into researching information about vasculitis online? Uh, sure. Let, let me share uh, here. Can you see my screen? Yep, that looks great. Um, so um, why don't we just jump in? Um, so many of us, you know, how do you how do you start looking for information about vasculitis? Well, how about we type in in a Google search? Uh, what is vasculitis? Uh, and you see all kinds of information that shows up on the screen. So how do you know where to go? How do you know what's credible and uh, what kind of sites you think uh, would be best? Uh, well, the first thing you can look for are whether something's like a, a .edu, which would be a university, or a .org, which would be an organization, or a .com. Uh, and sometimes this search tells you. So here's another one. Um, if we type in vasculitis support, you can see some of these links are sponsored. And that means that uh, in this case, this is probably a company or uh, some other reference um, that um, is paying for, for that ad, right? But many of these, what is vasculitis? You can see our uh, universities. Here's the Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, uh, WebMD, many of these that you've heard of. And then sometimes you see ads over here on the side. Um, so uh, you have to really uh, take your time and sort through these and figure out uh, where's the information coming from? Who's the sponsor? Is there, is there any agenda? So what I tried to do is break down some examples to start with that I think are, are good um, sites. And Kathy, I'd be interested to hear uh, what you think as well. Um, so the first category would be foundation websites. Uh, for example, the Vasculitis Foundation. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with the Vasculitis Foundation, of course, sponsoring us here today. Um, so if we go to the Vasculitis Foundation website, uh, which they just redid the website, and I, I really liked what they've done. You can see a tab right here for education, and you can find information about all different types of vasculitis, uh, treatment and research, uh, other resources, uh, events, etc. So if you're not familiar with the VF website, I really encourage you to spend some time there. Uh, Kathy, do you use the Vasculitis Foundation website often? Yeah, I was just going to say I use it all the time. One of the most common features that I use when I'm talking to other people in social media groups and things is the find a doctor under resources. That is a great way for people all over the country that are looking for, and actually it's international, but there's so often the groups I'm in are in the United States and they're looking for a uh, doctor that specializes in or has some knowledge of vasculitis. And so that resource tab is great. I also send them to the, um, so that's where the find a doctor tab is. I also send them to the video library, which is right below that. 
and it actually takes them to the Vasculitis Foundation's YouTube channel. And there, there are so many videos that are medical webinars that have been posted there. And that's another great place, as well as where this video will be living. Um, also, the education tab that's all the way over to the left, that one talks about the vasculitis types and you just kind of touched on it. I feel like this is one of the best places to get basic information when you've been newly diagnosed. Yeah, I agree. So um, maybe we can talk about the VF website in more detail uh, another time. But if you haven't spent any time on the new website, please, please do take a look. And I also um, did just want to add before we move on the Vasculitis Foundation website, the information that's contained in it has been reviewed by doctors and medical specialists. So that's another thing that we don't often know when we're researching uh, how accurate it is. And we do know that about the VF website. I also would encourage anybody who has not um, used the VF as a resource to connect with other patients. Uh, I found that that's one of the best ways to find out uh, more information uh, and to learn about vasculitis. Uh, so there are other organizations, uh, National Organization for Rare Diseases, which you can um, enter in the search. And then if you're outside the U.S., uh, our neighbors to the north, uh, Vasculitis Foundation in Canada, or in Europe, Vasculitis UK or Vasculitis International, or whatever country or, or uh, location you are, please try to find some local resources that might be in your own language. Uh, another uh, category would be medical organizations. Uh, and the example I picked here was the American College of Rheumatology. So if we go in and look up their website, And I'm going to say vasculitis, so we can find their vasculitis information. Uh, you can see here, some of this information is printable in a PDF form, uh, also in, uh, in other languages. And they have quite a nice site uh, to break down um, different uh, information about vasculitis for patients. Uh, and then there's also something else, and they um, uh, develop clinical practice guidelines. So. Uh, rheumatology is one of the areas uh, that specialize in treating people with vasculitis, and uh, most of the docs belong to professional organizations like the ACR, uh, and this allows the doctors to connect and share information, and the ACR also um, publishes guidelines uh, for how to treat vasculitis and how to diagnose vasculitis, and they've actually done a whole series of these in the last few years including some patient-friendly plain language recommendations. These are great resources to print out and take to your doctor or to read yourself. Uh, and I think the ACR has a lot of really, really great information. Um, Kathy, have you uh, gone to the ACR uh, website? I have not, but I have talked about it a few times with a few people. And I do understand that that it's one of the best resources for the doctors that most patients see, because most vasculitis patients have a rheumatologist involved in their care and rheumatologists go to the annual meetings of the ACR and they communicate with each other and there are special uh, sessions just on vasculitis. So um, using this website seems like a great idea. Yeah, and there's also, um... ULAR, the European Alliance for Associations on Rheumatology, uh, between the ACR and, and ULAR, these are the two top uh, uh, medical organizations, I think, in the world for, for rheumatology and, and vasculitis specialists. Uh, so in the third category, I put uh, government resources like uh, the National Institutes of Health. So if we go over to... Uh, Google NIH vasculitis. Um, you can find NIH uh, sites uh, with information about vasculitis. There's a nice tab over here uh, with symptoms, treatments, living with vasculitis, finding clinical trials. And if you click through on some of these other buttons, you can find more detailed information on different types of vasculitis. And this is a government resources, a, a .gov, and this is our taxpayer dollars at work for us. These folks work for us. 
And this again is reviewed by doctors like many of the other sites we already talked about. Uh, so uh, a great source of trusted information. I Have you also, tried the NIH website? I, I was just gonna say, I think also that the um, it's, it's relatively fine and acceptable for a patient to refer a doctor to an NIH website because the doctors are going to, or the ACR, or ULAR, they, they, the doctors are going to think of that if you're referring to something you found on that website and you refer them to it, they're going to think that that is acceptable form of um, medically reviewed information and they'll be receptive to listening to you and, and uh, what your concerns are and the information that you got from there. Whereas if you just say, I was doing some online research and you have random information. I'm not sure they pay attention to you as much as they do if you say from the NIH vasculitis website or the ACR, the, I, particularly the government ones like you're talking about. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, I think that um, the quality of the information, especially when you're trying to share something with one of your healthcare professionals, will get their attention. Uh, so uh, there are other ones such as the NHS, other uh, for, for folks in the UK. Uh, so look for your government resources. Um, another category, uh, academic medical centers. So if we go back to the original search that we did, uh, what is vasculitis? Uh, we saw a lot of those come up in the first hits. There's the Mayo Clinic, <clears throat> the Cleveland Clinic, um, as a, we, we saw the NIH site, um, going further down, here's the NHS we just mentioned, the ACR. So, uh, you can see so many of the sources we already talked about. Johns Hopkins, there's the Vasculitis Foundation, uh, University of Michigan, we go on and on. So you notice that since we're a rare disease, most of the hits that we see are, um, pretty dense you know, medical information that we come up with uh, right away. Uh, and you can always go in and look at these sites and see, is it a .edu or a .org or a .gov versus a .com? And I think that that helps, uh, helps you determine this, the credibility of the information right away. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, would, <clears throat> would it also be smart to look at the contact us or about us section so that you can see you know, who it is that's putting, that is that is responsible for this website? Yeah, and I think we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, yeah, so a lot of these folks have information uh, about diagnosis and, and symptoms and treatment and et cetera, because of course it's more uh, medical uh, centered. Uh, now, when we get to other sites, I think this is um, uh, relevant to what you were just saying, Kathy. Uh, let's walk through a few examples of, of some sites. Uh, here's one, anko101.com. Anko101.com. Uh, so this is a site about understanding anko-associated vasculitis. Uh, and in particular, GPA and MPA, and Kathy, you have MPA, right? Right. Uh, and this is, you can see uh, very clearly that it is uh, sponsored by a company uh, and they have links for patients and healthcare professionals. And as you were saying, you know, you could scroll all the way down to the bottom and you could find the contact us or the other um, information about, uh, <clears throat> health uh, data privacy, uh, et cetera. And you can find out about uh, who has sponsored it. So if it's not clear on the top or the bottom, sometimes you have to search down here in the About Us to find that. But Amgen is very clear up front. Most of the pharmas are pretty clear. There's a lot of regulation about um, education uh, and the, not wanting to have overlap with a company that makes a drug that we might uh, use for treatment of vasculitis and their educational um, initiatives. So they have uh, strict uh, requirements to disclose uh, their, um, their affiliation. But if you look in here, there's actually a lot of really useful information and they spend a lot of time trying to make it more um, uh, patient friendly. 
and easy uh, for us to understand. So I think this can be a great resource to go and do some reading. You always need to do your due diligence and see who's sponsoring the information to make sure that you're aware of that. Anka 101 uh, is one site. There's another one uh, that's industry sponsored in Europe called Maya Anka Vasculitis. These are both on, I gave examples of the type of vasculitis that, you know, Kathy, you and, you and I uh, both have because EGPA falls under Anka as well. And then this other one here, this Ankin Vasculitis News. I don't know if you've ever seen that one, Kathy. I'm not. Mm -mm. So um, I subscribe to their um, to their email list, and uh, you might know them from their columns that they feature. I do. Uh, for people living with uh, vasculitis, and uh, some of our friends and fellow uh, patients um, will uh, write write columns from time to time on here. And they basically take research articles um, that have um, come out and they often will summarize them. So uh, like a recent paper related to something to do with ANCA associated vasculitis and summarize that and link to the article. So um, I find that they're uh, usually pretty fair. If we go back down to the bottom, this is a good example where you can go in and read about um, their editorial and ethical policies and, and um, their journal journalism background, et cetera. Uh, but again, always beware, especially with so-called news sites, who's actually sponsoring the news um, to do your own, do your own research. So you may have seen some of the things that they've posted, but not realize that it was coming from them. Yeah, I was just going to say, I do see, I do get the, I thought of it as bio news, but I do get it from that newsletter by email regularly. And I read most of those articles. Okay, great. Um, so then here's a, a pro tip, up to date online. Let me go to that one. I'm running out of tabs here. <laughs> up to date online. So up to date online is uh, so far everything we've looked at has been free. Up to date online uh, does require a subscription. Uh, this is not the link that I want. I think I can get there from here. Uh, but there is a, some free information on here, and I just wanted to show you because it's really a treasure trove. So we'll do ANCA associated vasculitis again. Uh, and then here's an example, GPA and MPA. And I don't know if you can see the name of the docs up here, but you probably recognize a lot of these folks. Okay. So this is like the Wikipedia of medicine written by doctors for other doctors. And it's um, you usually have to have a subscription in order to get into all the information but they do have sections in here that are uh, written for patients, um, like this one here, patient education beyond the basics, again, written by some of our docs right here. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, get this information for free, the parts that are about, that are written specifically for patients. And this is by their, uh, the doctor's opinions on what the most important information is that we should know. Uh, breaking down the different types of vasculitis. Now, if you are uh, a little bit more uh, medical savvy, you can sign up for a week uh, or a month access, and it's not that expensive. So sometimes I might save up some questions, or if I have something really that just came up and I want to do a deep dive, then I'll like go in and spend a week and, and print everything out and then go and look at it later. So it doesn't cost that much to do that. It's like $20 or $50 for a month's access. And you can do that from time to time. Um, so that, that was my pro tip. Yeah, that is a great tip. I have, until you told me about this last time we talked up to date online, I'd never heard of it. And, and um, I do recognize all of the doctor's names in there. So that is great to know. I, I respect them and I would love reading some uh, articles there. So I'll, I will remember that one. Cool. Um, and then uh, just wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about what sites to avoid. And I think that more comes down to common sense. 
it's hard to just go and say this site is bad and this site is good. And, you know, how do you label that? But I think, you know, Kathy, you know, we could, we could talk about this all day, but you got to use your own common sense. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, I I would, I would love for you to go back to where you pulled up Google and entered vasculitis, anything. And you said there was an ad on the right, because I, I don't think everybody knows the difference between you did comment sponsored, sponsored, sponsored at the top Mm -hmm. of things. Um, I know as a business person that if I pay for things, I appear higher up on the research on Google and that it'll say sponsored because I paid for it to show up there. Um, But I'm a business that doesn't necessarily, because I also own a business. So that's why I'm saying that. (laughs) But um, the ads over on that appear on the right are also they're paid um, and they could be by some company that is being helpful to those of us with vasculitis, but they could be by somebody that is not not helpful and not medical. So I I just feel like that's another thing that we should um, maybe make sure all the patients understand that the the right side very often is for ads. Yes. And then, you know, um, the companies get more and more clever. I mean, you saw like the first hit was Mayo. The universities can also pay to have their ads show up first. Right. So that might be one of the reasons that you see them at the top of the list, not necessarily because they're the most trusted. Um, So, you know, the other thing is, you know, there there are no miracle cures. We know we know that, unfortunately. Um, So you really need to take uh, claims like that with a grain of salt, you know, in fact, if you, let's see, if you Google, if I go back to search, miracle cure for vasculitis, let's see what we get. Hmm. So we've got some treatments, therapies. There was the ANCA uh, 101 site that we looked at. That Clinic. one. Clinic. That one worries me, how to get rid of vasculitis, fast and reliable results here. Yes, info to discover. And that was a sponsored ad, right? So we've got a uh, artery cleanse. Uh, I guess I'm not gonna comment about that. Um, and then if you scroll down, um, you know, I saw this one like apple cider vinegar tonic, you know, okay. So it reminds me um, that we should probably make sure everybody keeps in mind that we shouldn't be self-treating and adjusting our meds without talking to the doctor. And also that a lot of the supplements and things that you might be taking, sometimes they can interact with other drugs or they can affect your test results. So it's really important to share that information. Yeah, I was also gonna say, this is a topic that is about is directly related to our topic today of how to research properly online. This slide really does inform all of us how important it is to not take everything on all the other sites that we didn't review as fact, um, to discuss them with your doctor and to remember, look at what the site is before you decide that this is something that can help you. And definitely talk to your medical care team about it first. Um, I'm not opposed to, there are some really great alternative health therapies that help all of us, but I just wanna be sure that people understand that um, the miracle cures are out there on the internet. And and we, we would like you to be more informed. I also wanted to say that on the Vasculitis Foundation website, um, there is, if you do vasculitisfoundation.org slash about slash news, it's a good feed. It's called an RSS feed. It's a good feed of news and things that are currently happening um, that you can rely on being accurate. So it's, that would be it. It's called an RSS feed. So if you want to know what is happening most recently with vasculitis, this is a great way to find accurate information. Yeah, that's a great source. Yeah, so then, uh, okay. So these are the five sites we came up with. Uh, 
I encourage everybody to go and play around on the internet. And uh, I think it was Dr. Langford who said on one of our webinars, the internet is a, a great source of information and a great source of misinformation. Yes. So be careful. And that's the end of, uh, of this video. Uh, you can look for our other quick tips coming soon. Uh, I listed a few down here. Well, thank you so much for um, doing this with us and, and showing us exactly what we should and should not be looking at so that we know we're getting accurate information. And thank you so much to Dr. Gordon for helping us out today. I know you're a patient, but you're also a biomedical researcher, and we really appreciate your insight today. And also our sponsors, Amgen, AstraZeneca, and Novartis. Thanks, Kathy. See you next time.